Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in return with having. When a man is in love with a girl, when he's in love with a woman, he misses her a great deal. But when people not in his life continue to presume that he is available to them, the foolishness that they have in front of God is amazing. You see, I came to a community to start my life over. I came to a community to begin a place where I might be able to produce an environment for my own next steps in life my own new chapters of my life, my own ability to transport myself carefully and easily through a bus system that was supposed to be easy and frugal and easy for me. The challenge, of course, came when COVID hit, and even though I had predicted that to some people before it hit, I sort of forgot about the fact that the Lord gave that information out. What I do know is that people don't think about what God can do in retaliation for defiance in retaliation for disobedience and in retaliation for the foolishness of men and women who think in this world they're gods. You're not a god in this world. Yes, you do have freedom of choice. You absolutely do have the access to free will that God gives us. But God also gives us a satanic force. And that satanic force is often assaultive, often aggressive, and often an abuser of people's rights, an abuser people's time, an abuser of people's loins, an abuser of people's, well, funds or money. The truth is that people who abuse people often try to fix their abuse by giving people money, and it never quite works before God. You see, before you began to abuse, you should have thought about, what does God think of me at this time? You see, if you think that you're abusing in the name of God, you have totally failed yourself. At no time has any god of any type of religion ever said, go out into the world and abuse in resemblance of me. You see, the abusers like to abuse psychologically. They like to abuse emotionally. They like to abuse physically. They like to abuse in ways that is inappropriate. They like to abuse sexually. And sexually doesn't always require the dropping of trowel and the raping of someone. It can often be someone who is abusive in every way. Who wants to pretend that they're here to save the day, but they're not really doing that. They're trying to make up for the sins that they've committed. They're trying to make up for the sins that they're about to commit. And oftentimes that's inappropriate. You see, God didn't give you the right to have the 316 version of forgiveness to allow you to do whatever you like in life. You see, what you like in life is one thing. What you don't like in life is something else. And openly, we have to pay attention to what is and isn't right. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, and our own truth for us as truth may not be the truth for someone else's life. The truth of God is that God is a loving, honoring, peace-bearing, principled deity in the world, a divine architect of everything. The liars of Satan will do abusive things. They will say mean things. They will say salacious things. They will solicit, they will steal, and they will threaten. When a person puts out a warning that is very different than threatening, the warning is if you continue to interfere and impede a life, then you will have a problem. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. And when you speak the truth, you have nothing else but truth to speak. But when you speak a lie as if you have rights to someone like me or someone else without their consent and without their permission and without lawful representation you have failed yourself you have so failed yourself that you've availed yourself to think that you have the right of freedom over someone else's life you don't there is nothing in our historic constitution nothing in our bill of rights and nothing that allows you to do that any day or any night the truth of america is that we have rights and those rights are given to us by our birthright, but those rights are also given to us by the illnesses, not at all, but by the sacrifices of the men and women of many colors and many nations that came here long ago, who gave up their rights to fight for freedom of our people. The freedom of our people is secured by the armed services that go overseas and not only protect the impoverished and protect the well, the folks that have difficulties, but also they protect our borders. They are the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, and the Coast Guard. These are the groups of people that deserve our regard. 
when people disregard people in uniform regardless of their conditions and regardless of their consulting and regardless of their work, regardless of their past or their present capabilities, we have a problem. In life, we have moments of time to speak honor. An American citizenship is about honor, dignity, and regard. The red, white, and blue of our flag teaches us that. The white is for purity of heart. The red is for the blood that has been shed before you so that you would have freedom and responsibility for that regard. At the same time, the blue is the tears that many families over the course of time have shed for those who have lost their life in civil wars and international affairs that have costed us important people, important groups of people, important bodies of people in this world. In life, we have moments of time to speak truth. And speaking truth is speaking truth. Speaking truth is not your version of God's world. Speaking truth is what is the truth for you? What is your religious view? What is your belief in a loving father figure or a divine mother figure? That is in you. Every human being has the right of choice when it comes to their faith and spirituality. They have the right to choose a denomination. They have the right to choose a proclivity or a preference in terms of what they wish to use as a foundational text or a foundational philosophy on which to base their life so that they live in harmony and peace with other people in the world. The people that don't do this are at war. They're always scheming. They're always manipulating. They're always thieving. They're always stealing. They're always lying. They're always trying to be better than they are in the real world. You see, you can continue to do that, but God is looking down at you going, I didn't advise you to do that. I didn't raise you to do that. I did not train you to do that. I did not mentor you to do that. I did not show you to do that. I didn't illustrate for you to do that. And I certainly didn't ask you to do that. The Lord's request of every human being is to find their divine calling. And their divine calling might be a lot of different things. It might be a lot of interesting things, and it might be a lot of different things, but it might be that your life is about constant lessons. You see, lifelong learners are always having lessons. Some lessons are positive, others might be more challenging, but in life we have to know how to make a living. We have to be teaching our young people in elementary school, not all, but by late junior high and early high school what the rules of life are. That the rules of life include that we have to learn how to socialize appropriately, we need to learn how to follow as a team member and participate in cooperation, consideration, and communication with others. At the same time, we have to eventually learn how to lead people because self-leadership is essential. You have to be self-led in order to do your studies. You have to be self-taught in order to keep yourself going and motivated. And openly, at some point, you have to acquiesce to submit yourself to some professor, some mentor, some helper to help you move yourself into the best life you can achieve for yourself. If you're not willing to do that, that's on your life and your choices, but when you like to produce a preaching idea that all human beings are the same, you've lied to yourself. The truth is that God loves diversity and God does not enjoy perversity. God loves people of all kinds and he creates them of all kinds. And as I quip to some young people who came for reading this evening as I was about to eat my supper who came to visit me, what I said to them is pretty straightforward. If God didn't want this in the world, he wouldn't make it anymore. You see, what we learn from the good books about the Lord is that God makes all things. He makes all creatures, great and small. He makes everything that we're going through, and all of it is on our lives. You see, what we go through is not something that someone else has done to us unless they've intentionally tried to lie about us, to interfere with us, to harm us. And who gave them any licensing to do that? Not one God in the world did that. What he said was, do your life in remembrance of me, meaning be a peace wager, be a profit taker, but include other people in your partnerships so that you have a marvelous team to produce a journey in life that will come back to me, hopefully, that you don't screw it up. Now, that's the simplest way to talk about a sermon concept of what is your life meaning today? If you're not making the money you need to make, then you have to find a way to earn your rights to have a higher take. 
Sometimes it means transferring to another store, or other times it means helping the person above you to move forward to do more. And that allows you then to move into the position of a general manager or a divisional manager or even something higher up the food chain in a corporation. But that's on your life. We don't do it by taking someone out of their position unless, of course, they've done something illegal or immoral that would be considered on behalf of the corporation to cause a lawsuit or the risk of life. You see, people don't always think about what rage can do, but rage can do many things. And in life, we have to know where our boundaries in this world begin and end. But we have uh, many opportunities in front of us. Many opportunities abound around us. And we have to make the most of every relationship in a loving and kind way. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. And the truth is God makes all people. And if God makes all people, then all people are considered holy until they are taintable or tainted by other people. If you become tainted by other people, it means your life is starting to play in the darkness of the world, the scene-stealing aspect of life, meaning you're so monkeyed with, you're so lost, that you're losing life. You're not thriving in life. You're not going for things in life. You're not trying to succeed in life. You're stagnating in life. And that usually happens because of the relationships that you are choosing to create in life. If you want to use and create and think that every human being you come into contact with is the exact same, that's a risk you're going to make. Because that is not truthful in the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord has many rooms. There's many types of people that God accepts into his holy heaven at the end of life when the Spirit returns back to the heavens according to the book of life. The tree of life is a different body of work, but what it teaches us is that there are life lessons that we have to go through. And there's many marvelous channels on YouTube that you can learn about these things with. I particularly enjoy spirit science because it talks about all kinds of topics, from Christianity all the way across to other aspects of Wiccanism that can help a person who is lost in their faith to find one that's right for their soul. Their internal soul is always effervescent and ever-changing, which means at one moment they might be Christian, at the next moment they might be Wiccan, another moment in time they might be reading about Buddhism, or, or some sort of Shintoism, or Confucianism, or anything else that produces for them a faith and a belief of what is and isn't lawful in God's house. What is lawful in God's house is loving kindness towards people in general. What is and is what is lawful in God's house is a care and protection of our waterways that give us the nourishment for our bodies and the animals around us that teach us many things about life in the old Indian ways of the Midwest. We were once an area that had Iroquois and others that lived a life very different from us. And these new labels about religion have come about from men, not from God. Although we have to presume that God gifted them those labels. God gifted them those definitions. God gifted that information. And as a result, people were able to do things. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. And the truth for you may not be the truth for another human being. But you have to decide, is that truth for that person not acceptable to you? But is that truth for that person not acceptable to God is not even on the table. Is that truth right for that person is more than obvious because their life is being lived in success. But the minute that human beings start to impede another person's right to pursue life, liberty, happiness, and prosperity in American culture or any nation around the world, we've already lost the whole battle with Satan.